Hello everyone, welcome back to the Limit of Adhesion and round 8 of season 7 of LOA Prime. We're in the Lotus 79 at Destiny's Child, Boodylicious. It's Watkins <laughs> Glen Bloot. My name is Gareth. Joining me once again in commentary is Jules. Jules, how are you? Good. It's a good job I put prompts on the screen for you, isn't it? <laughs> it tells you what round we're at. <laughs> I did feel a little... I felt a little stumbly there. Yeah, it's quite crazy. But um, yes, there the, is the, uh, the, the boots... There's a monkey. Oh, well, yeah. Never seen that advertising board before. So, Nick Lee confirmed as champion last time out at Monza. But Lyon in second and Tim Lauren in third. Still a great battle between them and Gavin Kelly in fourth place. Michael Messenger in fifth. And then Maxwell Hugovin, Winslade, Etridge, and Dom Harker rounding out the top ten. Yeah, yeah. Maxwell's getting better and better as the season goes on. So, he'll be looking at the places above him. Let's hope you can get off the line then. And the NGPP, NGP powered by Volvo team on top, still in the team standings ahead of Wizards Transmutation and the A team. Looking at the Club 1500 Championship, then where it is all still to play for between Eric Piusi, Chris White, Nico Martel, and Chris Forrester. So a very, very exciting battle there. And even Roberto Costa, shout out for him, look, in fifth place and on 160 points. So he's just about on the cusp. Maybe just uh, only fighting for second place now. And in the championships, uh, team championships for the Club 1500 round, then we've got Wizards Necromancy ahead of McLaren and Wizards Illusion in third. So uh, Necromancy pretty much nailed on for that one, do you think, Jules? McLaren, an outside chance? Unless McLaren, yeah, get one twos in the next two races, yeah. I would guess oh, that. I. I would love to see a McLaren one too. That would be so cool. Anyway, here's the practice results then, and it's David Lyon, the fastest with a 132.687 ahead of That's Terminal a Lyon. shocker. <laughs> <laughs> and look at Alex Murphy all the way up there in third, and Nicola Lee, our new champion, all the way down in sixth. Ah, oh, you don't think he's taken the foot off the gas, do you? No. David Lyon's <laughs> a hot lapper. We know this. Da well, it we know known. Dave is a hot lapper. Yeah, and uh, and it does still tend to change when we see the grid, which I'm sure we are about to now. And it's David Lyon on pole. Congratulations to him ahead of Termolar and Gavin Kelly up in third. Great result for him. Nick Lee back up into fourth place. Then we've got Stephen Maxwell in fifth and Don Parker in sixth. Russell Bright in seventh. Alex Murphy is on top in the clubbers. I'm not really sure he is a clubber technically, and he is from Canada, not from the United Kingdom. Eric Pusey is in second, Chris White in third, Nico Martel in fourth, Chris Forrester in fifth. Then we've got Rich Meesters, Costa, Pepper, James Pepper, and Keith Schooling rounding out the grid. Got to the end before they all disappeared off the screen. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> Just <you> about. <laughs> so, 17 cars lining up for this one. Um, very exciting to how this cars will go around this track. It is a super track for racing. We had a fantastic race here in the USF Championship this season. And uh, the NASCAR boys raced here quite recently as well, didn't they? So here we go Indeed. then. And oh, it's a stormy start. start. Yeah, Malarin straight off the line. And uh, is Lyon going to be under threat by Nicola Lee as they come into Turn 1? No. And Don Parker nearly going into them as well, but gets it on the brakes quite nicely. But Tour with a storming start. Remember, he led early doors at Monza as well. Kelly in the 18 car as well. How's he doing? He's dropped one place, obviously, to Nicola Lee. Here they come down the long straight then towards the inner loop. We've got side-by-side -side cars back there. One of the wizards. And is that Alex Murphy in the Williams car? It is making a move. Yeah, he's replaced Stock in the Williams car livery. He has, like yeah. A very popular uh, livery this season across the yeah. Uh, championships. Yeah, that famous Wizards livery. <laughs> we'll never let him forget that. <laughs> no, no, we will never let him forget that. He was supposed to be here tonight. He could have defended himself, but he's not, so he can't. Yes, <laughs> get well soon to Mr Innes. So the cars are absolutely flying around the track there. They're already up into the heel. And using all of that runoff there, as you can... And uh, Nick Lee is harrying line now. That's Russell Bright then in seventh place at the moment. And he's uh, going some side by side with Steve Pepper, who's looking to go round the outside of him. Looks like he's still trying to. Yeah. 
to keep an eye on that as they come up to complete the lap. James Pepper running very wide in the second to last corner. He's in the more McLe modern McLaren livery. Lap one completed already then. Till Malaren with a seven tenths gap over David Lyon. And Nick Lee four tenths back from Lyon. That's Eric Piusi then. And he's harrying Don Parker. So the, uh, the, the top of the Club 1500 mixing with the back of the top, uh, top split as usual then. Good to see. Rich Meese is yeah. under attack from James Pepper into in a loop. Oh, they made contact. Bit too yeah. late. Oh, what a shame. And that's James, uh, Steve taking avoiding action then. Steve Pepper missing the in a loop safe. Wisely done there. Although uh, James was still rolling, nearly collected him. <laughs> <laughs> Murphy really harassing Pusey for the lead of Club 1500 here. Yeah. And I, I really don't think Murphy should be in the club as he's definitely well, showing top split pace. I think at the moment he's he's fighting with the top of the clubbers. But yeah, you, you'd say that he's probably, once he's got comfortable with the car, he would be top split, yes. I mean, he's a 2K driver and he's fast in USF, he's fast in everything else, so... Yeah, we'll give him the grace for the end of this season and then boom, up there as you go, mate. Yeah, don't disagree with that. So yeah, I wonder why he's showing us uh, as being from the UK then. He is one of our resident beaver bobberers from Canada. No, no, he's British. He <laughs> just doesn't admit it. <laughs> Nick Lee's still behind line then. The gap has come down though, and the gap has come down between Lion and Malaren at the front as well. So yeah. these are the top three. They've broken away from the rest of the field. They really have, yeah. And it's in a bit of a no man's land between them and Parker. It is indeed, yeah. Look at the aggression into the early part of the bus, uh, the inner loop there. I always want to call it a bus stop because to me that is a bus stop chicane. But yeah, they should, they should. You can see that Malaren and Line. Kelly and Parker are all using the extreme jump the curb as close to the barrier as you can in the loop. Yes. Whereas Lee isn't. Is he not? Wow. No. So I wonder if that's uh, yeah, just a little bit of preservation going on then for Nick Lee. He's also using a proper uh, H pattern shift. Wow. Brave stuff then from the champion. Well, you know, he's champion. He doesn't need to... Uh, to win anymore yeah yes indeed so as we look though at uh, Don Parker who's currently sandwiched in between uh, the clubbers of Pusey and Murphy ahead and Forrester and White behind sorry White leading Forrester there and uh, and this really is the, the title fight although obviously Martel he's down in fifth at the moment Only there just he is yeah. yeah he's not that far back is he just certain shots he's not quite there but he does tend to start the race quite um, conservatively and just ramp the pace up. We know he's got super one lap pace though, has Nico. Yeah, absolutely. As has Chris Forrester, who's had a number of pole positions this season, which is so unfortunate he's never been able to convert it. Yeah, Chris... Martel's had two so far. Forrester's had two, and then one for White and one for Pusey. Feels like Nico should have had more, actually. I suppose there aren't that many races in the season. <laughs> well, um, Murphy stole the whole last race, didn't he? Yeah, one McLaren taking the runoff there out of the inner loop. I think it must have been Forrester. That you can see he's just slipped behind Martel. And it was a great example there as Parker was taking the ultra-aggressive route over the kerb and then the McLaren boys taking the slightly safer line. Yeah, when you're following someone that doesn't take that, you have to copy them, basically. Otherwise, you just run into the back of them. Mm. Um, I noticed that Bright has started to make his way up the field. He was very gentlemanly and letting everybody pass at the start. Didn't want to get any scraps, um, any incidents. He's now kind of working his way up through the field as people drop out. He is a gentleman driver. Mistakes. And this is. Is, this is his first, uh, first race in LOA Prime, actually, as well. Welcome aboard to Russell. Yeah, welcome to the 79. Yes. There he is. And he will be teaming up. Lovely livery. Yeah. He'll be teaming up with Winslade next season in No Slots, No Glory. Looking, looking forward to seeing a new team and a new livery there. 
though it does oh, mean yeah sadly like a new livery yeah sadly the end to the etm though oh and here comes russell then making a move down the inside then on roberto costa into t1 safely done by both drivers very respectful good to see that's right and uh, now he's going to try and catch up to that club 1500 title battle yeah but like you say, nice to, nice to see, uh, oh, here's uh, Steve Pepper dropping it, round he goes, oh, into oh. the wall, narrowly avoiding Keith school there as I came through shoot, oh, and that's a replay of the collision between Pepper and Meesters earlier. Yeah, he tested a bit too much there. Yeah. And yeah, Pepper also having another accident and getting stuck in the barrier later in the back of that. Oh, what a shame, yeah, and that's uh, when you're coming out of the boot section. Very tricky corner, that. Is it slightly off camera? Oh, and another mistake for That's both James. Peppers pretty much wrecked. Oh, dear me. Two Peppers for the chop. Oh, and Martel making a move on Forrester. Nice Trying move. to make his move, yeah, make his way up. It's like I say, he just like, yeah, he likes to bed himself into the race and then as he they go for it. So, uh, yeah, really nice move into heel there. That's Martel up into fourth place then. But he really needs to be getting after Piusi to keep this title battle going. He's currently six seconds behind. Oh, Piusi with the fastest lap. And line, I noticed. Not letting Malaren get away. I haven't even checked in with the top, top split battle for quite a while and we can see, yeah, the only the front two really in the 33s and everyone else more in the 34s, including Lee. So a lot of work to do for those guys if they want to be challenging for the win. Oh, and this battle is not over at all between Martel and Forrester. This is looking exciting. Yeah, indeed. Clara running out of races to get a win here. Yeah. We've got this race and the next race, and then we're changing car. Oh, and that's oh. Uh, Don Parker. Oh, it's, it's Don Parker around, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No Maxwell. In, oh, no, Maxwell is in this race. Yeah. No, I recognise the helmet more than anything. I just see the two, <laughs> but not the whole number. Yeah. Hopefully um, no damage. But that promotes Russell Bright then up to fifth place in top split. And it's nice to see another classic uh, Wizards livery on the grid, the Saudi version. Ooh. It's nice. Indeed. So, as the action is starting to, uh, to quieten down a bit, as the drivers start to bed in and find their rhythm and their place on the track, we are on lap 7 of 28. And uh, I have some interesting uh, facts about Watkins Glen, which I did do some research on before. Did you know that the town was originally called Jefferson? Okay, no, well, I didn't. Jeff, and it was formed in 1842, and then it was renamed to honour Dr. Samuel Watkins in 1852. And that's how Excellent. it became Watkins Glen. I thought that was very interesting. That is, that is very interesting indeed. Yeah. Did you know that Dave Lyon named his dog Jeff after Watkins Glen? <laughs> is this a true or false? His dog is called Jeff, yeah. <laughs> Not after the track. <laughs> I was going to say, I doubt he knew what the track was called or the town was called. Ah, uh, dear. Early buff. Oh, oh, no. Schooling. Schooling in... Yeah, that is looking very uh, tired and sadly... Is he out of the race? He's showing he's in the pit, so maybe he will rejoin. Looks like both Peppers have retired, sadly. On board with Alex Murphy, though, he's currently in second place, still chasing Eric Pusey. That's him just up the road of us. Both of them looking a bit squirrely there through heel. Indeed. Did you know that Tutti Frutti's childhood favourite sweet of mine, or did this continued in 2019? I didn't realise it was then. Who's that who's just made a mistake? It's like Kelly. That is Kelly in the Airwolf car. And now he's in between the two uh, Club 1500 guys. Here comes Murphy though, he's making a move into T1. Side by side. Yeah. Very respectful racing between the two there. 
I tried to find Tutti Fruits in the shop a while back and I was I just couldn't find them and that would explain why and I'm gutted because they were a childhood favourite of mine as well. They're amazing. They were. My favourite was the, the pink ones. Oh, I just put a handful in that. <laughs> <laughs> you can see uh, the difference there between taking the extreme way through that bus stop and not. Uh, yes. Murphy is now lo- no longer on the tail of Kelly. Yeah, it's quite a... It's a a really visible gap opening up just in that one corner, really. Yeah, like I say, you try doing that following someone that isn't doing it and you're in their gearbox. Yeah. Chris White, not too far behind as well. We just see him in, in the back of shot there. Costa in the pits. we we'll to see what happened there. Yeah, yeah, let's hopefully see a replay of that. Yeah. Schooling's uh, back definitely out. Definitely looks like Pusey and Murphy have made a break from Mark White and Martel. Yeah. And this could be only good news for Pusey's title hopes. Exactly, yeah. And that's a new fastest lap for Till Malara. And then a 133.635. Almost th- matched by Line, though. Yeah, so close. A 649 for Line. I remember Line and Miller having an epic battle here, just blew the rest of the field away. In the Formula Renault? Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Well worth a rewatch of that one. Looks like the SDK, ooh, Tracker just had a little bit of a freeze. We're back in action though. Yeah, we've got something wrong with the uh, timings here. Yeah. So we'll just have to call the action as we see it <laughs> and hope for the best. We're looking at the leaders though, it's Till Millar and, and David Lyne and they have broken away from Nick Lee who we can just see there so he's about a corner behind as they blast up out of the toe towards the hill we've got a replay here of Costa's incident that's at turn oh, one that ah, curb yes. is raised and it gets on the body and, yeah. and that's what killed Gavin Kelly in the USF 2000 race and there is Kelly with a fantastic spin that was a beauty <laughs> His tyres will be complaining after that. Oh, yeah. Here's Chris Forrester then. And this was earlier on, yeah. Ooh. Is that a repeat then? Yeah. That's the second time he's made that mistake. Yeah. Going the wrong way. Agonising rejoin there for Chris Forrester. And he's a man who found an enormous amount of pace in the second half of the USF 2000 season of taking some coaching from eventual champion Tom Malarin. So, guys, there is some uh, coaching available for drivers. If, they, if you want to learn more and get quicker, some of the quick guys in the, in the league will help you. So, uh, yeah, if they offer offer, do take them up on it because it really works. Yeah, do that. And, uh, yeah, also mentioning USF 2000 season two confirmed. Yes. Yeah, really, really happy to see season two confirmed. Sign-ups are open and the uh, the track list for the next season looks excellent. Yeah, the provisional calendar, very, very exciting indeed. With our new USF 2000 admin, Till Malarin. And uh, I want to say a big thank you to Stephen Maxwell, who has taken over the video production duties for that series. Really, really grateful to him for that. We do like anybody that uh, helps out and uh, produces content. Yes. Yes, indeed. In fact, we were asking four drivers if they fancy doing streaming points of view races as they compete in the officials. If they're looking to do, are happy to do that and put it on our channel, that would be uh, most welcome. Would indeed. Here's Eric Piusi then, currently leading in Club 1500, and he's opened that gap up to Murphy behind him. And Murphy is still behind Kelly, and Kelly is now closing in on Busey. Now, is Busey going to massage him past? He's quite a smart racer, isn't he? That would be the thing to do, yeah. Well, it's quite weird, though, because these two obviously go toe-to-toe in the same split in the USF 2000. And uh, if Busey does win the championship, he'll be in top split next season in prime as well. Yeah, well, there's only one split in the USF 2000, so he has to. Yeah. But it's worked, I think it's worked really well, especially considering we are using 
uh, the you know the reverse grid format for the top eight. Which we yeah, talk? which um, Prime will be doing next season as well. In yes, the, uh, in the IRO four or F four, um, we've settled on a British Formula Four championship visiting all the British tracks. So it was uh, Silverstone, um, Knock Hill, Donington, uh, Alton Park, Snetterton, uh, Snetterton, yep, Brands Hatch, uh, all of the good ones, and then um, two other tracks which the drivers voted for outside of the UK because you didn't have quite enough for a full season uh, and that's uh, Hungaroring and uh, Hockenheim yeah nice to have a couple of little foreign holidays a year so that's going to be good indeed indeed <laughs> and uh, yeah two rounds sorry two races each round with a top eight inverted grid for the second one yeah so yeah very very familiar format if you race in the USF 2000 championship uh, hopefully it will be just as exciting as it has been in the USF, which, I mean, that has been a storming season, hasn't it? Yeah, it's going to be exciting here at the moment as well, because Lyon's getting an excellent tow. He is, he's getting very racy. forcing Malaring to go defensive into the bus stop. Oh, look at the curb usage. <laughs> Tour's entry was definitely compromised there, and he was a lot slower on the way in, and that has really helped Lyon, who is trying to harry him as they come in to shoot. God, how wide was Tor there? Kicking up the grass. That was very cool. I did notice earlier that Chira is using a lot more of the track. Dave's sort of just trying to protect his tyres. Mm. From all that, the sliding around he'll be doing in the dirty air. Yes. And worth noting, just like Nick Lee is six seconds back. This is just uh, so weird to see after an incredible season from him. He's just been so dominant all, all season long. Is it only Hockenheim where he didn't finish on the podium because of the uh, the, the weird incidents? The no, he's finished on the podium every race. No, apart from, he didn't finish on the podium there, did he? Yeah, he did. Did he? Oh, he still finished second, did he? Blimey. He's finished first and second in every race. Wow. So even with first that... First or second. Even with that contact, yes. Yeah, as Kelly goes round, you see. What a fantastic move that was on the outside of the final corner. And that is not a slow corner. And that's no, Alex it's Murphy. Let, yeah, it's let Murphy get onto him. Which is exactly how he didn't want to let Kelly through. Oh, no. Yeah. What a oh, no! Well, Kelly's <laughs> lost it. <laughs> Kelly's had the big one. He hates that curve. That's a copy, isn't it, really, of the uh, USF yeah. incident. Exactly, yeah. Both times getting beached on the kerb and slamming the wall. He's going to have to make an early trip to the pits, but it is pit window time, I'd say, isn't it? Yeah, just about. Um, now that Murphy's passed, is Pusey going to keep up with him? Got a replay here. Chris Forrester coming into the inner loop once again. Is this spin number three? It, well, incident number three for him in there. It is. Oh, clipping the wall. Turning lock is not great on this car. Yeah, we found out at Long Beach in the first round. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and that's yeah. That's number four. Wow. Can safely say he's not enjoying the chicane. That is well bent. And on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a replay of Alex Murphy then, who just crept up onto the back of uh, Kelly and Busey, and then just managed to get a great run out of the final corner. He was looking a few tenths back, so I'm impressed that he suddenly closed in like that. There's Kelly dropping it on the kerb. Meanwhile, Lyon and Sherman are in. Yeah, Lyon to is toe. through. Chair's coming back. Oh, here we go. It's the classic Watkins Glen drag race down the straight towards the chicane. Who's going to blink first? Lyon's on the inside. He's going to compromise his line. No, they both go very aggressive. Tor nose diving into the track as he bumped off the kerb. But line is through. Now oh, here or comes Tor he? down into the chute. Tor's on the inside. What a move by Malarin then back into the lead. He wasn't going to accept it, was he? He was like, no, no I'm <laughs> going to be in the lead before the end of this lap. Uh, both of these two 
love a good race and a good battle on track though, so they will be loving this. We're on board with Chris White, looking back at Nico Martel just behind us. Two of the championship challengers then, and they are very close together on track. Here we come into the tow. Meanwhile, here's the battle for the lead in top split. And is that Nick Lee closing in behind? Worth keeping an eye though, Kelly with that damage after that spin. He's still in fourth place, but uh, where is Russell Bright in comparison to him? And are they close together? Uh, they're just in sight, actually, of each other. Yeah. yeah, they are. Yeah, you can just see they are heading out. Of, well, Kelly's now in the final couple of corners, and Bright is on that short shoot towards the last two corners. Here comes yeah, Lyon yeah. once again. He's on the outside line this time. Tour's given in the way for it. Oh! oh! That's what happens when it goes wrong. But he's held it. That's Somehow. amazing. Somehow. And Chio was also nearly losing it behind him. Yeah. <laughs> that must have scared the pair of them. It's one thing the to be battling for the win, but another just to throw it away and wipe the pair of them. Oh, coming back again already. Wow. Kelly took uh, That was Lyon taking the sensible option there and just tucking in behind. Yeah, I wonder, did he have to serve a slowdown from basically cutting the chicane, the grass there? Oh, maybe, yeah, good point. Yeah. In um, fact, it's showing that he's dropped behind Lee. Yeah, Lee is uh, suddenly, and he's gained a second because they were fighting. But as you say, he's suddenly fallen right back. Has he got damage? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. The front wing is damaged. <laughs> <laughs> On board with Nick Malarin into the pits. Malarin into the pits, and that is about scheduled time, though, isn't it? Nick Lee in the pits as well, as is Kelly. Uh, sorry, Line. Why do I keep calling Line Kelly? What the heck is wrong with me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very interested to see, though, keeping an eye on that uh, the gap. In fact, Bright has fallen behind Parker, so maybe Bright has made a mistake. Martel into the pit sim. I'm looking for penalty notices because if you remember last uh, last time, Malarin had probably Shaw on for the win at Monza and he sped into the pits and threw it all away. He did. So he'll be anxious not to speed in or out of the pits this race. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly and, uh, and Russell Bright both in the pit lane now. Malarin's back on track as is Nick Lee as is Lyon. Parker has now jumped up into third as he has yet to hit. A replay here then. And what is that? Some kind of landmine? Yeah, and that would be why uh, Lyon got the first run on him. Yeah. The tour needs to report that one. Uh, oh, that's how Lyon yeah. lost it. That's where his second place went. And there goes Nick Lee then. And this is Russell, and uh, this is probably why Russell fell behind Don Parker. Wow! Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think Parker was starting to harry him and put the pressure on. So that's Line has pity, Parker hasn't, and Line's back past into third. Pit stop in hand, ready for Parker there. That's, uh, that's crazy, isn't it? Just the pace differential between the top of the grid and. Uh, even the top of top split and the and the rest of top split in the Lotus 79 has just been <laughs> well. Well, I probably practiced and Parker probably didn't. <laughs> <laughs> True. But I know when I when I practice in this car, I can I can't get within a second of these top split guys at all. And here comes Parker into the pit lane, and we've got a McLaren in as well, which is Chris White. So. The fact that he's pitting from the lead suggests that Murphy and Piusi have already stopped. Yes. Um, I apologise to them for missing it. There was a whole flurry of pit stops last lap. There were a lot going on. And, uh, yeah, so Chris White back out on track then, but now behind Murphy and Piusi once again. Oh, and there's his penalty for speeding in the pits for Russell Bright. It didn't happen for Tor, but it did happen for Russell. Big shame there. 
Worth noting that Roberto Costa now in retirement, as is Keith Spooling joining the two peppers. Forrester says he's a lap down, but he's still going. And that's Line. Line's crashed and towed. Is he out of the race? We need a replay of that one. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine he probably took repairs when he pitted. Given his excursions over the curbs. Yeah, I think you're right. It's such a gamble, isn't it? Do you take do you take the uh, the quick repair for just a bit of bent wing, or do you just hold on in case you have a big one? Yeah, yeah, it's a <laughs> hard decision, really. It is, especially with this car. Meanwhile, Nico Martel with Kelly now hounding him. Yeah, Kelly's playing with the Club 1500s today. Yeah, he is. <laughs> But presumably his car is now all uh, straightened out after a visit to the panel beaters. Yeah, as long as he hasn't done it again done since it. the pit stop. But that was only a lap or two ago, so well John if he has managed to break it again already. If it goes for a replay, I'm going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Nico's very wide on the exit there, clipping the grass and uh, no second invitation necessary for Gavin Kelly who uh, storms past and Reed takes his place Maxwell in the pit lane now from the clubbers and I assume Lyon is now out of the race uh, Russell Bright now serving his uh, speeding penalty, he's back in the pit lane So, going back to uh, talking about the name of this place, did you know that originally it was just called, after it got renamed after Samuel Watkins, it was just called Watkins, and then they added the name Glen, which is actually after the gorge down the road. Oh, and it so, wasn't because of some guy that was hanging around called Glen. No, no. Or, um, but it was the, the track was dug with a spade by a man called Doug. Of course it was, and he lost his knickers here. Yeah. <laughs> so, track first built in 1956, and uh, it's it's not actually in the town of Watkins Glen at all. It's in the town of Dix, which is just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Well, yeah. I don't know. Why didn't they call it Dix Glen? <laughs> Dicks racing. <laughs> Come and see a bunch of dicks <laughs> in Dix. <laughs> I've no idea. It's not even named after Scott Dixon, who does no. hold the lap record, though, <laughs> which I thought was amazing. The oh, yes, yeah, Scott the, Dixon. The fastest lap of the track in Dix is held by Scott Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Parker versus Kelly. Well, that's a classic battle we haven't seen for a while. No. I'm thinking back to uh, season four, Formula Three. Half time, you're ex just half expecting when the camera pans like that to see the other car facing the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I thought Dom was um, taking the full chicane, but he didn't seem to that lap. No, he didn't, no. Got Rich Meester's taking a trip down pit lane. Just probably waving to the crowd. Yeah, lovely detail on that wheel. <laughs> so. Yeah, I would like just a nice simple Lotus 79 wheel, but it really wasn't worth it for the one season. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a little recap of the order then. We've got Tom Lauren now leading by nearly six seconds from Nicola Lee. Gavin Kelly is now up into third place. We've got Don Parker in fourth, and he's just behind Kelly. Stephen Maxwell is a good chunk of time behind. He's now in fifth, and uh, Russell Bright in sixth place in the lap down following his speeding penalty and his drive-through. In Club 1500, we've got Alex Murphy currently leading the way from Eric Piusi. Then we've got Chris White in third. Nico Martel is in fourth. Uh, Rich Meesters, who we just saw in the pits, and then Chris Forrester a lap down after his quadruple whammy of crashes in the inner loop Sad. yeah it's surprising he's still going moving. yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, sad retirements then for Costa schooling Pepper and Pepper. And look at that, Club 1500, the uh, the average high rating, strength of field. Oh, Parker! <laughs> Losing it on the way in, that's a big one. And he's towed. Yeah, I was going to say, Club 1500, the average strength of field is 1.5k, which is bang on the money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Alex Murphy is helping it to be 1.5k. Yeah, he's balancing, of course. <laughs> he's also <laughs> leading by a lot less than Malarino is over Leap, so... Hang on, why is that gap so big? It was literally six seconds when I did the run down a minute ago. Lee must have made a guess. Yes, but Lee has, has had a big problem. Yes. Oh, and here's Kelly having a big one. Keeps it out yeah, of the wall. That's not the way you take that chicken. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's so close to that barrier. Just that. You have to be, but yeah, that was a bit too close. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh. This is Lyon. Yeah, David Lyon. Just having a, having a big one, and then a replay. Just after that, it looks like he's trying to carry on, but his steering is... Gone. <laughs> yeah. Not having it, is it? No. Yeah, that's, that's the end of him, sadly. Here's a replay of Tour, then. That's a big one. That Somehow. One. Wow. Well held there. I bet he thought he saw that wind disappearing. And here's what happened to Nick Lee, then. Another victim. Yeah. Even the champion. Well, I mean, we've only we've seen two mistakes from him this season, I think. One at Hockenheim, unforced error, and that one, and that was Dom's dramatic exit from the race. Yeah. Ventured onto the grass in the breaking zone. Yes. Yeah. And that has promoted uh, Russell Bright up into fifth place. Then. Yeah, and that's going to be the minimum he can score as Parker and Lyon are out. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm very excited about the IRO4 next season then because, uh, yeah, obviously prime numbers have taken a bit of a dip with our adventure in the Lotus 79. I mean, it has been a really exciting, challenging car to race. A lot of hard work, but it's been fun. Oh, no, Russell's in the pits and he's out of the car. He's probably having a look to see if he can fix it. Yeah, <laughs> going around kicking the tyres. <laughs> because that's now put him behind Parker. Yes. Because he's towed. Because he was a lap back. Yeah. What a shame. We're looking at Nico Martel then. Kelly. Back ahead of Kelly. Yeah. Yeah, Kelly's not having a, an easy ride. Considering he's in third in top split, <laughs> he's had a number of adventures. Well, he's also going to be um, dropping this team next season, joining the Wizards. Oh, so we're losing all of the, the classic LOA teams then, apart from the A team. Well, it doesn't say that they can't come back in a later date, but yeah, I think they're having a break. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah, the ETM, it's been uh, name from Winslade all, all the time that it's been a team, so... Yeah, that's not that's not going to come back uh, unless Josh That wasn't his original team, was it? It was Dirty Legends. Yes, but season three onwards has been the ETM. So, yeah, Dirty Legends. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people change the teams' names season to season and whatnot. They and like you get so many one-offs that come in and don't race. So. Yeah, you do, you do, but I, I just, I like... It's just a fun little addition. I, it is, yeah, but I quite like the, the continuity and the... It almost gave a bit of history to the to the league, you know, having these, these teams that are long-standing. And, and bear it in mind, we are now in the, the, the month of the third birthday, aren't we? Yeah. Nah, I mean, you're going to have new ones and new records made. This is the Wizards era, where there's just half the grid of Wizards. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that won't last forever and there'll be another era. It will, yeah. It's a it's a really good era at the moment, I must say. I mean the league is just going from strength to strength. Which is why yeah, I'm as I say, I'm really looking forward to the replay here. This is how Russell ended his race. Oh well I've done that yeah. one in the past. Yeah, I've crushed there before. <laughs> Yeah, it's. Uh, I was going to say it's. Um, 
it will be nice to go to the RO4 because I think we're going to see the numbers pick up. It's a car that more people own and uh, I think people will be more willing to race it because they'll feel like they have a chance to be competitive with it. The Lotus is a very difficult beast to, uh, to get on top of. I'd like to return to the Lotus at some point. Well, yeah, I mean, once we get get bigger and easier, we've got a chance of doing that. But at the moment, yeah, I think it was it was a fun season, fun experiment. And, uh, yeah. Now time to go for the populist car. Yeah, and maybe at some point a modern Formula 1 car. Maybe, yeah, once we're quick enough. Because that's where a lot of people, that's where most people come from. Like, they'll be, not in this sim, but in Formula 1 sim or uh, R-Factor. Yeah. They would have played the Formula 1 games, the old Challenge F1 game, all the various iterations of the Codemasters F1 games. Well, oh, Dave and I, yeah, we used to race the old um, F1 2002, which was before Cody's, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, the, uh, the F1 2002, uh, yeah, and there was the F1 Challenge that became the R Factor, I think it's the same team. Ah. You know, I always hated though about that, like racing back then. You know, sing, the single screen thing—you just couldn't look into the apex. No. And it just for me, it was like it was nice to have a wheel. You know, I mean, I had the old Logitech driving force like you did, but didn't have that kind of. You were losing something because you couldn't look into the corner and you couldn't turn your head. Like I would turn my head and I'd be like, "Well, why am I looking at a wall?" You know, <laughs> it wasn't part of the game. So. That's why I just, for me, VR, uh, or, you know, triples, if they've got triples, but it just makes, it adds you something. You don't know any better when you don't have it. I remember going round to your uni room when you were installing Jeff Kremen Grand Prix 3. Yeah. Or trying to. Trying to, yeah. <laughs> Computer was a piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, but then you just didn't, I know what you mean, but even back then I was, I would be do, driving on F1 2002 and enjoying it, but going... I wish I could turn my head. You know, I w you know, I was already had that sort of like hankering to be able to, to to look into the corner and have that sort of sense of realism. So, I, I love where we are now with being able to like race in VR uh, and triples. Just to interrupt, White just made a mistake there, and Martel is just closed right up on him. Yeah, he's also being harassed by Kelly. <laughs> Kelly is just being very weird with the clubbers today. It's annoying them, isn't it? He is, yeah. And if uh, if Martel can jump white, then that will be great for his championship aspirations because it will put him right behind Piusi. Uh, he needs to, yeah, as Piusi is currently in second. So what, he'll drop, what, three points? It will be 18 to 15 points, wouldn't it, have scored? No, they get 15, 15, 15 oh, 35. Crazy points, so. Oh, Kelly's passed. Nice move by Kelly there. Mortel looks like he's thinking about going back through. Yeah, I'm trying to fight for the podium here, man. Oh, he's telling off Kelly there. He said, I'm trying to fight for a podium, man. Yep, and there's nothing to stop me ranking you. Oh, 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 spicy talk from Kelly. I think the smart oh, thing would have been not to say anything. Oh, we missed what he's going to say. I think they're having a discussion about if you should race each other. <laughs> I mean, Kelly is on the podium and there is no challenge from behind, realistically. Obviously, I have no connection to either of these two, and this is the spur of the moment. I think they both have good points. They do. Oh, oh. Kelly has dropped it. <laughs> so, Martel is battling for the championship and for a podium here, and would like to get past White, who's just made a mistake. But our rules also say that the classes can fight each other, and there's nothing to say I that they're fighting. Appreciate that you're fighting, meters. but there's, no, there's nothing that says I have to sit behind you. Yeah, no, that. <laughs> So there's nothing that says the Club 1500 have to let the drivers pass, the, like the top split. Three laps left, and yeah. no one in top split who you're going to catch if you get past them. Yeah, and you were still about three or four seconds behind him, so... <laughs> He's still going. Indeed. And Kelly's in the pits and presumably out, because he must have used his fast repair earlier. Yeah. And Maxwell now on the podium. 
But um, from Kelly's perspective, there's nothing to say that uh, Lima or Matt Lee wouldn't have made a mistake just like White did. And if Kelly is close enough, he could have taken advantage of that. So I think both of them have points. I think they both have valid points, yeah. I can understand the frustration from Martel, though, because obviously I think for him the added uh, the added complication is that the championship is, is to play for between him, White and PUC. Absolutely. I think Kelly should have just not said anything and they could have dealt with it after the race, but... He made the mistake of responding. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, binned it. And then, well, the, the bin it were, did make it particularly amusing. <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem here is it's very hot, and so following someone made it even hotter, and so if you did follow someone, your tyres got cooked. Yeah. We've seen a lot of mistakes today. Yeah, I mean, we've got, what, six, seven now drivers out. That's... Yeah, it's a lot. That's 7 out of t- uh, 17. I'm trying to think where else we've seen that kind of retirement rate. There was, was it ba- well, Bathurst, I suppose, in the F3 we saw something like that? Yeah, and uh, a lot more lost at Long Beach. Oh, God, Long it's Beach, yeah. <laughs> I've blocked it from my memory. <laughs> We're on board with Chris White then. And who's that? He's made a mistake ahead of him. It's... Oh, it's one of the wizards. It's, uh, it's Meesters. Meesters, Rich Meesters. Yeah, oh, of course, because Costa's out, who's teammate. Sorry, Rich. Rich gets going again. So we're on the final lap then for Malarin, who is heading for his first win of the season. Here is Rich's uh, spin. Goes for the power spin. Yep. And then here comes Chris, who... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> just says... He just snook <laughs> spotted him in the top right corner or something. Though. Yeah. Reminds me of uh, the <laughs> Charlotte Oval move from Slade on the, on Alex Murphy. <laughs> so here's Chris White, currently in third place. Martel's about four seconds back. I mean, you've got to say that Chris has had the measure of, of Martel this race anyway. Indeed, he has, yeah. And that may have fed the frustration of Martel. Yeah. But Chris had made a mistake. They, they were within a second. But Kelly, unfortunately, was at that point making a move. He was, yeah. Which he has a right to do, but perhaps in hindsight he wouldn't have. Yeah. <laughs> well, only because it cost him a podium. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> So here he comes then, Tor Malarin, USF 2000 champion, and now he's going to become the winner of LOA Prime round eight at Watkins Glen. Yep. Out of the final corner then, and he's already weaving in celebration. Congratulations, Tor Malarin. Super win there, and we wait quite a long time for Nick Lee. For someone that hated the car, he's going to be quite happy, I think, I think. joining... Lee, Lyon and Kelly, the only other wins from this season. Yeah, such has been the dominance of this man, Nick Lee. And he comes home in another second place. Congratulations to Nick. What an amazing season he's had. And here's Alex Murphy then, winner of Club 1500, and he's only just behind second place in top split. Fantastic drive. Only six seconds behind him is Pusey. So, yeah, they've both kept the uh, top splitters honest this race. Yeah, great drive by Eric once again then. And uh, really looking forward to seeing what the t- title uh, oh dear. <laughs> championship permutations look like. <laughs> that engine is gone. Yeah. Chris White celebrating a podium. Congratulations to him. And here comes, obviously, a very frustrated Nico yeah, Martel. Oh. Can still be a gentleman about it. Saying good race to the guys ahead of him. Thank you, Miguel. So as the drivers engage in a bit of silly fun time, we wait to see the results. <laughs> Very helpful. Yeah. Give them a push. So Turbularin wins from Nicola Lee, Stephen Maxwell, uh, an unlikely podium after a bit of a weird start to the race for him. Gavin Kelly in fourth and retired as is Russell Bright, Tom Parker and David Lyon. 
So four retirements from seven uh, top split drivers this race. And Alex Murphy wins. That's his second win from two, I believe. Uh, That's right. Eric Pusey in second and Chris White coming home in third. Nico Martel is in fourth and Chris Forrester in fifth. So a bit of a dent for his championship aspirations. Rich Meesters was in sixth and then Costa schooling Pepper and Pepper all sadly retiring. Championship standings then. Obviously Nick Lee remains on top. Line is now remains in second as Tour remains in third. In fact, they all remain the same except for Stephen Maxwell who's jumped up to fifth place. Uh, Michael Messenger in sixth and then Merrin Hoogevin in seventh. Winslade's in eighth. Etridge and Don Parker remains in tenth. Then we've got Miller. Sure has Go certainly tightened up the, the gap between the line there. He really has, yes. Yeah. So we've, it's all to play for between them two in the final round, which will be in Canada. And then uh, in the championship standings, then the only move is Wizards Abjuration jumping up ahead of Risky Ram Racing. Everyone else remaining pretty much the same. Yeah. Nice secure us back there. I know Sam's only been able to appear for a race or so, but yeah, it's good. Championship standings for Club 1500. This is what we we're interested in then. And you can see Eric Pusey remains on top. Nico Martel has now jumped. Chris White, he's up into second place, one point ahead. Chris Forrester is in fourth. And then we've got Roberto Costa in fifth. Rich Meesters remains in sixth. Alex Murphy jumping up six places to seventh after his two wins. <laughs> Amazing stuff. And uh, just ahead of Keith Schooling. And then in the Club 1500 Team Championship, we've got Wizards Necromancy, still ahead of McLaren and Wizards Illusion. Team Heap Together in fourth with their double retirement. Oh no, that's not Team Heap Together, is it? That's the uh, South African boys. Can't wait to see them back again. Yep, that would be good. Um, obviously, Martel scored more than White there, even though he finished behind him. That's just because White had a, a drop score. And to lose, and Martel didn't. Yeah, I was frantically trying to do it in my brain, but I assumed that was the case. <laughs> mm, yeah, White lost to seven points from earlier in the season, whereas uh, Martel lost to zero. Yeah. So, final round then at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve on the Ile de Notre Dame in Montreal. <laughs> so, hopefully, we see lots of our, uh, our moose lovers back on the grid there such as Martel and Murphy and co. And uh, we hope to see you there as well. Don't forget, you can find us at thelimitofteaching.com, Facebook, Instagram, all the other good stuff. Do like and subscribe. New website soon. Yes, can't wait for that. And uh, come say hi on Discord. Cheers, Jules. No pressure, Marin. Bye. Right.